from the church. Hey there. Welcome to another celebration with Falling Brook Heights Baptist Church at the Center. We encourage you to prepare your heart, mind, and soul for a time of reflection, learning, and prayer. If you have any questions, or if you're just looking to chat, check out our website, churchatthecenter.com. And now, let's worship. Happy anniversary! Oh yes, today we celebrate Fallingbrook Heights Baptist Church of the Center's 75th anniversary. It was November 26, 1945, just after the Second World War, in which people gathered together and had a meeting, and they decided to organize a regular Baptist church called Fallingbrook Heights Baptist. And throughout the years in ministry, sometimes with struggles, many years with celebrations and success, they pursued the Lord's will. And in 1997, the spring of 1997, the leaders decided that at that point, they needed to sell the building. And they had three directives. Seek the Lord's will, rest, and stay together. And they did. And they decided that they would move to Birchmount Community Center, and they became Fallingbrook Heights Baptist Church of the Center. And this year, 2020, during a pandemic, we had the Lord's will direct us to move to a ministry front space called The Reach. Today, we celebrate 75 years of ministry together. Fantastic. Stay tuned after the morning worship service. Stay with us. We're going to do a Zoom call. You'll see the number on the bottom of the screen and join us for that Zoom call so we can fellowship together for our anniversary Sunday. Join us with Reverend Mel and Susan Finley. And today for our services, we begin We're going to read from Psalm 136, and you can say with Janet the refrain of this psalm. It goes like this. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. And the end of the psalm gets more personal and says this. To the one who remembered us in our low estate. His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His His love love endures endures forever. forever. May God bless you and us as we worship together, celebrate, and sing. I am delighted to add my voice to Mel's as we celebrate 75 years of Falling Brook's presence, witness, and impact for the Lord. You know, anniversaries are certainly significant moments to celebrate and to reflect, and they are also moments that can enrich our faith. It is a wonder and wonderful for me as I reflect that Fallingbrook has been part of our lives for over 30 years, and even more as I reflect on how 23 years ago the Lord wove our lives together even more closely, with Mel becoming pastor during another season of uncertainty and change, and certainly trusting the Lord. I reflect that at every turn, the Lord has surprised us in ways we could never imagine or plan, and that he continues to do so. At the last minute, the community center was raised up at our, as our new church home. Instead of being a moment of sadness, the last service in the former church building became a celebration of hope with three people being baptized. I think about that first service in the community center on a Palm Sunday with three people coming into membership. I reflect on a dynamic youth ministry, on stadium services, on community parades. I even reflect about going on tour to Campbellford Baptist Church. I think about the Lord at just the right time gifting us with Pastor Ken, Janet, David, and Andrew. And who could have imagined the reach, particularly during a pandemic? Only God 
who is always ahead, leading, and most often in surprising ways. But most of all, I believe an anniversary is a moment to reflect on who we are and who we have become in the Lord. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's handiwork, or I prefer the translation that says we are God's masterpieces, created anew in Christ Jesus to do the good things that God has planned or prepared in advance for us to do. How often we've thought of that verse as speaking to us as individuals. But Paul wrote this to a church, the Ephesian church. You know, I've so often referred to Fallingbrook as the gold of the kingdom. But when I think of this verse, I think it perfectly describes and applies to Fallingbrook. So my prayer is that Fallingbrook will know and live to the full the blessing, the call, and the confidence that we are God's masterpieces created anew in Christ Jesus to do the good things that God has planned and is planning in advance for us to do. And to him be all thanksgiving and praise. May God bless you all. Be transported to another time. This Christmas, we are having a traditional Christmas window at the Reach. Come and see when hope came down. It's a life-size nativity like you've never seen before. You can view it from the Reach window anytime Sunday, December 13 to January 9th. On weekday evenings and weekends, there will be live vignettes and live action pop-up. The Reach is located at 1666 Kingston Road, on the north side of Kingston Road, just west of Birchmount in Scarborough. For more information, check out churchatthecenter.com. Be reminded that hope is yours to have. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. You're the God of this city, you're the King of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are, you're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. to be done.
a stretch lesson for you today. So today is a special Sunday at church. It's our anniversary Sunday and we're celebrating 75 years meeting as a church, Fallenbrook Heights Baptist Church at the Center. And 75 years is a long time. Most of us weren't even alive 75 years ago and for some of us our parents weren't alive that long ago either. So much has changed in 75 years. Technology, where we meet, tons of stuff has changed. One thing that hasn't changed during this entire time is God. And you've heard me talk about that in different stretch lessons. How God remains the same through all of the years as the grass fades and the flowers wither. Or as things around us change, God remains the same. But something else that we can remember today as we celebrate 75 years of a meeting of meeting as a church is found in Psalm 126 verse 3 and it says the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy and some of those great things include being able to meet at places like the community center or the reach being able to have kick in youth and jam, being able to have our other groups that meet, such as men's breakfast or Bible study or Triple L. God's given us so many great things, and we can remember that God is with us wherever we go, whether it's 75 years into the future or into the past. God's been with us and will be with us throughout the entire time. And so I have a message for all of you. On behalf of the kids and our families, happy anniversary, Fallenbrook Heights Baptist Church at the Center. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for our church, 75 years of our church, and for the next 75 years and even longer. We thank you for giving us these chances and opportunity to meet and to come together and to share in your word and to know you are with us wherever we go and at all times, no matter what happens in the world, Lord, we know that you are with us. And Lord, we pray for strength and wisdom and guidance and that we can grow in our faith, grow in our friendships, and have some fun. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. What a pleasure it is to be with you for the 75th anniversary of Fallingbrook Heights Baptist Church. 
a history that goes back into the past, but that uh, is current today and that is moving forward through all of you as you uh, plan, as you uh, make provision, and as you look forward to the future of God leading you as he has led in the past. We're so uh, appreciative of Ken and Janet, of the ministry that they've got, the friendship we have with them and with uh, Andrew and David. And it's Andrew who's behind the camera today, and I thank him for uh, him doing that. And we uh, just are so glad to be with you. Fallingbrook has always been built on openness to the presence and the, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. And we always start with uh, prayer, and so I'd ask you to listen as I pray that the Holy Spirit will join us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are a gracious God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, but you reveal yourself afresh every day and to every generation. We thank you for those who have gone before. We thank you for those who are with us now. We thank you for those who will be raised up in the future to carry on this ministry for as long as you decide that the ministry will continue. And so we pray that your Holy Spirit will be present today. We pray that your Spirit will speak through the words that I speak and that people's hearts and minds have been prepared. We thank you for those who are watching today. We thank you for their faithfulness. And we thank you for your presence and your power as we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I don't just come alone to you today. I bring greetings from Chris and Sarah Jones and um, Hannah and Haley. I had the pleasure a few weeks ago of leading two days of uh, planning and of retreat with the workers that they uh, work with in uh, Youth Unlimited in Lakefield. And what a delightful time that was, and what a reminder it was to me of the faithfulness that God has demonstrated. He brought uh, Chris and Sarah to us, uh, actually brought us even before Chris and Sarah were married. And uh, they had a wonderful ministry with us, um, got the baseball camp going, and uh, that uh, continued on for about 10 years. And now to see the leadership that Chris is providing in Lakefield to uh, the youth there, was just a, a very special opportunity for me, and a special reminder that God continues to work through those that he invites into his service. And um, I, just to share a word with you, when we started the retreat, and it was in person, there were six of us in total in a room that would hold 20 people, so we were appropriately distanced. We had uh, masks on when it was necessary to be masked. We respected all of the protocols that are necessary with COVID. And uh, when we started, the workers were somewhat discouraged. They had a program that worked in a school. And um, the school, of course, was closed to them. And they were wondering, like many people are wondering, how do you carry on programs when you can't get together physically? And so the approach that I took with them, and it's an approach that I know Ken has been taking with you, is to ask the question of, is it necessary to have programs in order to be with the Lord and to do what the Lord is calling us to do? And so by the end of the two days that we spent together, they realized that what their ministry has turned into is not a ministry so much of program, although program is important as people are able to participate, but their ministry is one of relationship. Relationship is critical, and that's what Fallingbrook uh, has always been built on, that commitment of one to another, the commitment that kept the people going when they were discouraged and didn't know what direction the Holy Spirit would lead them. And now we're at a similar point to the point when Susan and I first joined Fallingbrook back 23 years ago. But we had actually, as Susan has mentioned in her comments, our um, relationship with Fallingbrook actually goes back much further than that to more than 30 years ago. And the relationships that were sustained over the years, the commitment, that each person made to remaining together while they sought the will of the Lord, sought his direction, 
was what kept Fallingbrook going through that very difficult, very challenging time. And it was through that, as Susan's already mentioned, that uh, we arrived at the Birchmont Community Center. Now, 23 years later, the Lord has led you through the relationships you have with one another, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, to the reach where I am today, and to uh, an unknown future, a future in which you are seeking out the purpose of the Lord, the will of the Lord, what he desires you to do, here and uh, continuing, whether you continue or not, at Birchmont Community Center remains to be seen. But it's that commitment to one another, that commitment and honoring of the Lord, that seeking out actively of what the will and the purpose of the Lord is, that is the key to the strength of Falling Brook Church. And I know that it's going to sustain you in the time to come. I asked the Lord, what did he want me to say to his people at Fallingbrook during this service? And uh, let me be clear that uh, in uh, asking him, I didn't necessarily expect a direct voice back, but I did you know, expect and knew that there would be direction. What I got back was a direct voice. And the first thing he said to me was, tell the people that I love them. And I love them not just with a love that is like the uh, stars or uh, music idols or others will say to a, an assembled crowd, most of whom they can't see because of the spotlights in their eyes, but they will throw off the line, I love you all and thank you so much for coming. When you know that they don't know you personally, they don't love you personally, it's not that kind of love that the Lord extends to us. It's a very personal love. He calls us by name. He knew us before we were born. He's available to us at every moment of the day. And he wanted me to say to you how much he loves you. Loves you so much that his son went to the cross to die for you. To die for me. That's how much he loves, and that's what he wants you to understand. There is never a moment when you are separated from that love. There is nothing in all of creation, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And that's what the first thing that the Lord wanted me to say to you today. The second thing is that it's not just that he loves you but that he said to me, tell them who they are in my son, Jesus Christ. My son, Jesus Christ, transforms people. God is in the business of transformation. It's not so much who we are when we come to the Lord, when we first walk in the door of a church, when we first get that sense of, of something going on in our lives that eventually we recognize is the Holy Spirit working in us. It's not who we were when we came at that time. We can come out of any horrible circumstances. We can come out of re absolute rejection of the Lord. We can come from running away from him. We can come out of just a yearning and a longing. We can come to him out of desperation. We can come to him out of any kind of identity that we may have or no identity at all, where we're totally confused and don't know who we are. What the Lord wanted me to say is, let you know who you are in Jesus. And to do that, I want to make reference to something that the Apostle Paul has written, wrote it many years ago to the church in Ephesus. And for those of you who've never been there, it's an experience to go to Ephesus and to walk down the streets. The interesting thing is nobody lives in Ephesus anymore. It's deserted, has been for centuries. But in the time that Paul was there, in the time that the apostle John was there, the one who wrote the book of Revelation, the one who wrote uh, the gospel of John, the one who wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, the one to whom Jesus said from the cross, behold your mother, as Jesus pointed to Mary. And as he looked at Mary and said to her, behold your son, 
That Mary, Mary, the one who gave birth to Jesus, lived in Ephesus for a time and was there when John was there. Ephesus, at the time that Paul was writing to them, could have been Toronto. It was a port city. It was a thriving place. It was the place where the nations met together. People came from all over the known world at that time, from Africa, from Europe, from Asia. It was a meeting place, and it was a place of commerce, and there were wealthy people. You can walk into the ruins of homes that were owned by wealthy people and see how elaborate they were, how luxurious they were. That you can see the state of the buildings that had been erected at that time, not just one or two stories high, but several stories high. And you can go to the arena where Paul was uh, threatened by the mobs, an arena that sat more than Air Canada seats. 25,000 people could sit in that amphitheater out in the open. And the acoustics are so good that you can stand on the ground speak in a normal voice, and it's heard by all 25,000 people assembled in a, a semicircle around. That's the Ephesus that Paul is writing to. People that had come to know the Lord, but they had come as a small, tiny minority out of a, a group of people who had no time for the Lord, many of whom had multiple gods. They worshipped the Greek pantheon. They worshipped Roman gods. They Roman, uh, worshipped an eclectic group of, of uh, people. And, in, and out of that group had come a small but very powerful group of Christians. And Paul writes to them. And he says to them, Praise be to the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ. And here I want to say to you, that you can make this passage from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. You can make this passage your own. So where you see the word you or your, insert my and me and mine, and really make it yours. It's Ephesians chapter 3, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. And listen uh, as I read it. And as I talk a little bit about it, praise be to the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed me in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose me in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined me for adoption to his family through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given me in the one he loves. Now understand, Paul was writing to you. He was writing to me. He was writing to Susan. He was writing to anyone who reads that letter. And he's bringing God present to them in a way that God desired when he gave his son, Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, you have a God who appeared to people, who spoke with them, who raised up prophets to speak on his behalf. You have Moses who gave the law, which is a description of what God desires uh, his people to be, how he wants us to interact with one another, how he wants us to be healthy, and whole, and to engage with our neighbors, and, and to be welcoming to those who come from other lands. He did all of that, and he tried to draw people to himself through those actions. People responded, some of them, many of them didn't. And so in the New Testament, we have God who reduces himself to human form, who walks among us, who talks among us, who teaches us, who uh, performed miracles, and who shows us what God is really like. And it's that God that um, Paul is talking about. Paul came out of his grounding in the Old Testament, and he knew Jesus Christ personally, and he wants us to know that, that same Christ. And he talks about how God has blessed me, you, in the heavenly realms, 
with every spiritual blessing in Christ, it's not just that God is available to us for the present. It's that we have assurance that he is eternal and we in Christ are eternal. And then Paul goes on and he writes, In Jesus Christ I have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on me. With all wisdom and understanding, God made known to me the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. This is who Jesus Christ is, the one who brings redemption for each one of us who accepts it, offered to everybody, accepted by those who accept, who usually are a minority, but it's there for everyone to accept. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on me, on you, on each one of us. And then we are invited into the mystery of God's will according to his good purpose, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment. We're living in a moving stream that is moving toward the fulfillment of God's purposes, but not yet there. And so we are part of the fulfillment. Those who went before us, 75 years of people who have invested themselves in what became Fallingbrook Heights Baptist Church and continues now. And God has used all of that in this moving stream, all of us, all of them in this moving stream to bring about the fulfillment of his purposes. And so we go on. In Jesus, I was also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that I might be for the praise of his glory. And I also was included in Christ when I heard the message of truth, the gospel of my salvation. When I believed, I was marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing my inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Let's reflect on that for a few moments. Because what Paul is saying is that you and I were chosen before the foundation of the world. He's reflecting what the prophet Jeremiah had said more than 600 years before Paul. Jeremiah wrote that before he was conceived in the womb, God knew him. And as he was conceived in the womb, God had plans for him and those plans to prosper him and all of his people. Prospering not necessarily in a financial sense, but prospering in the sense of peace of mind, of willingness to go forward, of stepping out in faith, of being bold and courageous, and being willing to trust the word of the Lord and to take God at his word and to live it out and to let the Holy Spirit have free reign in us so that God's purposes that he created each one of us for can be realized through us. And then Paul tells us how that happens. He would, that um, it comes about in order that we might be for the purpose of God's glory. You see, when we hang on to ourselves, when we put ourselves first above everything else, we make it very difficult for the Holy Spirit to work within us. One writer that uh, Susan and I were reading this morning as we were doing our devotions said that when self comes, sorrow arrives. When self becomes first, and, and all of us know this, many of us are still living in that age when self is more important than anything else. And the problem with that is that with self comes sorrow. There's never any fulfillment when we concentrate on ourselves. 
that's what those who built uh, Fallingbrook Baptist Church knew when they were building it. That's what the folks knew when Susan and I joined them and they were looking to discover what God's next purpose for them was, what the next chapter would be. That's what held them together, was the knowledge that if they tried to implement their own thoughts, their own ideas, it would all come to nothing. But if they sought out the Lord freely and fully and asked him to show them, then out of that would come the falling brook that we know and would come all of the blessings that we have known all of these years. Out of that would come Ken and Janet and their family. Out of that would come the reach. Out of that would come all of the people who have come to Falling Brook Heights since those uh, days back when there were only 30 or 35 of us who were seeking out God's purpose and God's will. And it's all done because God loves us and he knew it long before we were conceived. And he's working it out in the lives of those of us who allow him to work in us. You see, the wonderful thing about salvation is that it is offered to everybody. As I mentioned a few moments ago, it doesn't matter who you were when God first stirred you to look in his direction. It doesn't matter who you were when you first rejected him. It doesn't matter when, who you were when you first put yourself on the throne. It doesn't matter who you were when you allowed God to stir your heart and when you started coming to Fallingbrook or to some other church, wherever you uh, may happen to be going as you view uh, this broadcast. It doesn't matter who you were then. What matters is who God can make you. And God is in the business of transformation. And this is what's described in this passage that Paul writes to the Ephesians because it applies as much to us as it did to them. And so mark it in your Bible. If you don't have your, a Bible handy, make a note to yourself. Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. Read it over and over and over again. Allow the words to wash over you. Allow yourself to understand that God has a purpose for you, that he always is in the business of growth, of transformation, of change, of discovery, and in the business of providing peace, freedom from anxiety, so that we can sleep peacefully at night. We don't need to be anxious about COVID and about the effects of COVID. We can rest in the assurance that the Lord is taking care of us and there is nothing in all creation that will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And that even if we get COVID, even if a loved one is taken from us suddenly and without any warning, no matter what the situation is, God is always there and he's always working with us to bring about his purposes for us, to redeem to heal, to restore, to draw us into his kingdom. Well, that's the second thing that God asked me to uh, tell you. Um, and uh, he was very clear. The first one, of course, was tell them how much I love them. The second one was tell them who they are in Jesus, my son. And the third thing he wanted me to tell you was tell them to get to know me better so that they can better witness to me. Tell me, tell them to get to know me better so that they can better witness to me. Isn't that a wonderful thought? You see, God doesn't want to be hidden. He's not a God who's out somewhere in the far reaches of the universe and keeping himself separate from us. He's not a God who shift shapes uh, and uh, shape shifts rather and appears in all kinds of different forms and and all kinds of uh, eerie uh, manifestations he's a god who loves us and who wants to be known by us he's a god who has put together 66 books of the bible making himself known in each one of those books he's a god who reveals himself through his son jesus christ 
And when Jesus departed from the world, when he ascended to be with his heavenly Father, and there to reign with his Father, there to intercede on our behalf with his Father, when he did that, he sent the Holy Spirit, and so we're not alone, even now, though it's 2,000 years since Jesus ascended. We aren't alone. God is still present with us, still working out his purposes with us, still asking us to share who we are with other people. You see, we are not uh, prosecutors. We're not in the business of judging other people. We're in the business of witnessing. We are witnesses to what God has accomplished through us, has accomplished through this church, has accomplished through you, has accomplished in a myriad of ways. We are witnesses to that, and we are called upon to share that with other people. Peter says in his, uh, one of his two letters to Christians who were facing extreme persecution and who didn't know where their next meal was coming from and who were in fear for their lives. Peter talks to them and he says to them, always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that is in you, but with gentleness, with respect, with respect for the other person, not beating up on them, not telling them what's wrong with them, but sharing with them what God is accomplishing in your life, sharing with them what you know about God today. You know, one of the things that uh, we need to ask ourselves is, is the God that I believe in today the same shape, the same size, the same characteristics as the God that I believed in a year ago? If he is, then our faith hasn't grown. We've gotten stunted and stilted in our understanding of the Lord, and we really need to get back into his word if you don't read the word daily, read it weekly. If you don't read it weekly, read it a couple of times a month, but read it. Start with the New Testament, not with the Old. Dig into it. Let the word wash over you. If you're reading something that doesn't make any sense, keep reading. Don't try to understand it. You're not ready to understand what it says. I well remember one of the deacons of our church when I was bemoaning the fact at a deacon's meeting that I wished I had known when I started my ministry at Falling Brook what I knew at that point in my ministry. And at that point, it was probably seven or eight years in. And then I could have shared it with the, the people. And the deacon very wisely said to me, Mel, we wouldn't have been ready to hear it. And there was wisdom in that. The Lord keeps certain things from us at certain times because we're not ready to hear them. And so that's what the great adventure of reading the scripture over and over and over again really is about. It's about discovering those things that we're ready to hear now that we weren't ready the last time we read that passage. Susan and I make a point of each of us reading through the Bible once a year, the full Bible. Now, I have to confess that last year, actually, when I finished last year, it was early this year when I finished, I'd actually started it almost three years before. And it took me that long to read through it because I was making notes and I was pondering and I was thinking about what I was reading. It took me three years to do a one-year Bible, uh, reading through the Bible. But it was worth it. And now today, as I'm back into reading through the Bible in a year, there are things that are hitting me now that I never even dreamed of then. You don't have to sit down and read a whole book of the Bible in one sitting. It's not like a novel. You don't even have to read a chapter. Read a few verses and let that wash over you. Whatever time you have available to you, take that time. If you're on the subway, if you're waiting for somebody to come to a meeting, pull out your, your phone and, and uh, read a portion of scripture that you have on, on your phone. It's so easy now. And you know, one of the great benefits of COVID 
has been that it has collapsed our world. There's lots of things wrong with COVID. There's a lot of people who have died from it. There are people who have long after lingering uh, side effects from it that are terrible. But one of the great things about COVID has been that we are learning that the world is really a small place and that there are many different ways that we can communicate with one another. Susan and I were invited uh, a couple of weeks ago to send um, virtual greetings to the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. The Jerusalem prayer breakfast normally, I believe, has about a thousand people that gather together in Jerusalem. And they come from various places of the world and they spend a couple of days together. The prayer breakfast actually goes over two full days. This year, of course, they weren't able to get together and out of the blue, uh, we have no idea how our names uh, got to their attention, but out of the blue, we were asked if we would send greetings to them. And so we put together greetings from Canada to them. And lo and behold, when the actual event was held virtually, 106 nations participated in that event. There were viewers from 106 nations around the world people who will never in their lives get to Jerusalem, were able to participate, to feel that they were part of the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. 440,000 people watched the Jerusalem prayer breakfast online. Now, keep in mind, we weren't watching people sitting down eating. We were listening to speakers of, uh, from numerous countries who were sharing their faith and, and uh, bringing greetings and all of that. And so out of the blue, the Lord opened up for us 105 other nations and 439,998 other people that we were able to communicate with because of being present virtually. We have no idea how many people may watch this but we know that it will be more than only those who are connected with Fallingbrook directly. Not too long ago, Susan and I were participants in another online event that had speakers from every one of the continents of the world with the exception of, of Antarctica. And they were people who would never get together at the same time in the same place ever because their schedules wouldn't permit that. But through virtual technology, they were able to gather together to bring their messages from every continent and to enrich all of us. The Gospel of John, which is um, a movie version of the Gospel of John that I'm connected with, Susan and I are involved with it. And uh, in fact, it's part of a global initiative that we are involved with. In the month of April alone of this year, because it's available in over 20 languages on the internet, available for anybody who wants to watch it, in the month of April alone, 16 million people watched that movie online. 16 million. The gospel is getting into places in the world that we will never get to. It's fulfilling what Jesus said about take the gospel into the whole earth. People here at Fallingbrook, you are the ones who are supporting, encouraging Susan and me and the ministry that we have to politicians. You are part of what keeps us going. Through your prayers, we are sustained. And every once in a while, the Lord will pull back the curtain ever so slightly to show us what he has kept us from, to show us what might have happened if his spirit wasn't present with us, and to remind us that we are totally dependent upon the prayers of people like you for the protection and for the opportunities that the Lord opens up for us. You are helping us financially to do what the Lord has asked us to do and has invited us to be part of doing. For that, we thank you. And may I uh, conclude these comments by saying that Susan and I know that the Lord has amazing things in store for you. 
that the reach is just the beginning of a whole new chapter in ministry for Fallingbrook. Whatever it is that he has in mind, if you seek that out in prayer, if you remain committed to one another, and your commitment is not to implementing your favorite idea, but your commitment is to seeking out what the Lord wants you to do, and then you willingly say, yes, I want to be part of that, and I will do whatever the Lord asks me to do, then there are exciting new chapters ahead for Fallingbrook Baptist uh, Church. And we just thank you for the support that you give to us. I thank you for the opportunity today to speak to you. And I thank you above all for the ministry that Ken, uh, Ken and Janet have here. It's a privilege to be friends with Ken, to walk with him, to get together with him. You know that our schedule uh, keeps us from being present with you physically much of the time. But spiritually, we are with you, and we know you are with us. And we are with Ken and Janet, walking with them in the ministry they have. So let me close this by praying for you. And uh, up on the screen, the prayer is going to be, and I'd ask you to follow along with the prayer. You don't necessarily have to say it yourself, but read the words. Let them wash over you. The words are taken from Paul's letter to Ephesians, from chapter 3, verses 14 to 19. And listen to the prayer. Make it your prayer. Father, from you, every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of your glorious riches, you may strengthen these, your servants, with power through your spirit in their inner being, so that your Son, Jesus Christ, may dwell in their hearts through faith. And I pray that these, your servants, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all your holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that they may be filled to the measure of all your fullness. O oh God, I pray in Jesus' powerful name to your honor and glory. Amen. I hope that you have enjoyed celebrating our 75th anniversary. We sure appreciate Reverend Mel Finley coming to share with us. And in just a few moments, at 11.45, you'll be able to go on to Zoom and to have a conversation, fellowship with each other. Let me close with this text from the book of Jude. Now to him who's able to keep you, to keep us from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault, and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service. For more information, visit our website, churchatthecenter.com. God bless.
Yeah.